invited by Sean Meiser um, to come up and hunt his property. I, uh, I got there pretty early. It was uh, definitely cold. I believe the, the, with the wind chill is around 18 or 20 degrees in Michigan. And it was going to be the, definitely be the last hunt of the year for me. Um, I was I, I was prepared. I brought you know a ton of hand warmers. I brought uh, uh, some. You'll see in the video. I brought some other equipment with me. Uh, I brought all the cameras. Unfortunately, it's it's extremely chilly, so it was hard to operate those cameras. December fifth, two thousand nine. I'm on I'm waiting for Sean Meiser to arrive here at his land. Um, we are going to hunt a night hunt. I think I'm going up by myself this time and hopefully get a chance to shoot tonight. Uh, it's extremely cold out here. Must feel like with the wind, like 20. Without, you know, with the wind chill, it's like 20 at least, it feels like. And I looked over to my left and I could see a, a doe out in the field grazing. Um, I was pretty excited about it that I saw her out there. It was, she was way too far away. I, I range find her at like 140 yards or so. And uh, after she left, um, Sean came home and then I made the decision to get down and go in and warm up, get some extra gear and make a game plan with Sean to make sure I was going to have a good chance to harvest the deer that day. Since Sean practices QDM on the land, I wanted to make sure whatever deer I did take, it was going to be either a doe or a large buck. He did give me the okay to shoot a uh, six pointer better, but uh, you know, if it wasn't going to be a big six, I didn't want to take the shot. I just felt it wouldn't be right. I'm hunting such a great piece of land, and I didn't want to get in a position where um, I wasn't proud of myself for taking that shot or taking that size deer. Uh, my philosophy has always been, you know, if I shot. Uh, five point last time, which is the buck, the biggest buck I've gotten so far. Um, I'm not going to just shoot a six this time. I want to get something a little bit bigger. If I'm going to shoot a buck, I want to shoot a buck that I'm proud of, that I love to display. So, I, you know, for me, it was going to be, um, you know, a six. It could have been a six or up, but it had to been a big six. And, uh, well, anyhow, I'm out there. I, uh, I went in, Sean came up with the idea to use the decoy, put me in the same spot, but use the decoy this time. And, uh, he wasn't going to hunt, so worst case scenario, he would um, drive the deer towards me by either starting a four-wheeler or um, doing a, a walk-in. So he, uh, it, so I ended up where I'm sitting out there, and uh, it was about three o'clock, and this six-point just appeared out of nowhere, and it was about three, three o'clock, three thirty. It appeared out of nowhere, and um, I, uh, I scoped him a little bit. He did, he didn't really give me the range that I needed, but. Uh, he, he was a good sized buck and uh, you'll see in the footage I'll cut him in that I really didn't think he was big enough for what I was looking to take that day so I would have passed on him regardless.
about uh, about another half hour, does started popping up in the field left and right, and uh, a nice spike came out in front of me, and he actually uh, ended up cutting in front of me and chase giving chase to a doe, uh, and he actually pushed a yearling out of the way to chase this doe around in the woods to my right, and uh, he ended up chasing them both out of the woods, and they ended up running. I was kind of hoping he would chase the doe, the, the big doe, to me so I could take a shot. Uh, however, that did not happen. The only thing that was close to me that was in shootable range was the spike, and uh, obviously he was not, he, he didn't even, I wasn't even considering him. So um, it got to about 15, 20 minutes before dark, so I knew you know, it was kind of now or never, and then uh, Sean started the drive. Uh, he started walking in on the field. The deer all ran at one time together, and it sounded like a wave, like an ocean wave hitting, it was so loud. And they ran across the field about 40 yards right to my edge, to my left, still out of range, but right to the edge of the woods. And they stood there, they looked back, and then he decided to move in forward more, and that's when they started scattering everywhere. Um, there was deer running under me, all in, my, all in range, just jumping, though they're at full stride. Uh, I pulled back my bow, I got set. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't turn the camera on because it was so fast, it all happened so fast. I pull back the bow, I start looking for a target, I'm looking, I'm looking, I started yelling, hey, 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 and I couldn't get the deer to stop, and I'm, I'm kind of um, all over the place just waiting to get one to stop and try to do a quick check and shoot, and finally I look up and um, this small doe stopped right by the decoy, and I think she saw the decoy and felt like, okay, the decoy stopped, I should stop, when all the other deer were running past me, and that's when I put the, the pin on her right on the front side here, and um, I just, you know, I looked at her, I, I made sure, I said, okay, I think I got it. I, I, you know, I pulled the trigger, it was a quick shot, I saw the line from the Luminoc, and it hit the deer, and I heard the swack of the swacker, just a loud crack sound. Um, she, I knew I hit her, it was stuck, it was definitely stuck in her, she turned and ran, um, but you could see she wasn't running fully, she was having a very hard time, she ran probably um, 15 yards, snapped the arrow out, and then the Luminoc shut off because she kicked out the Luminoc from the connection. And then she went another 15 yards and then turned off into the soybean and just collapsed. I saw her go down. I saw it the whole time I stared at her just to make sure that she wasn't getting back up. All right, just, just shot a doe. Oh, it was very exciting. Yes. Oh, the Luminac was awesome. I couldn't get the camera on time. Uh, hopefully we can see something. Here, it was a great shot, uh, 30 yards. I think I hit it right in the shoulder, but I can hear the swagger. That was the steam that was in it. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, yes. Oh, God, it's been a long season. Oh, man. Oh, God, I, put the, I took my time, put the pin right on it, didn't rush. Took this shot, and I... I just drilled the deer, I saw it go down. Oh, is that amazing? Oh, I can't wait to go get Sean. This is great. Alright. Oh. Yeah, I can't really use uh save it as a trophy. Oh, there's the product. That's what I wanted. All right, here's the swacker. Wow, that's uh, that did its job. Just covered. Covered. I should put this. So that's a mechanical, and what happens is, once it's in the body, it opens. That's why it does so much damage. But I'll be honest. Uh, the advertisement says you can hear the swack, and I heard the swack. Not even, I'm not even exaggerating. I smell skunk. You can just hear the whack when you hit. You heard swack and I smell skunk. <laughs> yeah, I do smell skunk. Awesome. It's not always about killing, you know, it's, it's about being proud of this heritage and, and really understanding and respecting the animal, the white tail, and some of the other animals we do hunt here at Bowman Planet. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Thomas. This is my hunt journal.